Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. It's really great to be here. Uh, is this called The Six? Is that what it is? <laughs> the home of Drake, right? You guys proud of that? No, I'm just messing with you guys. Don't mind me, I'm a little lethargic. I had a bunch of Chipotle, like, like this much Chipotle, and it's like working its way through my body right now. But no, seriously, um, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm really stoked to be here. I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Um, I'm not going to focus so much on the stuff that's on my site necessarily, because you guys can just go to Google and look at it. So I'm going to talk a bit about my journey and some things that I've learned, some techniques that I've kind of discovered, my creative path so far, um, all kinds of stuff. But before that, let's look at some images. So these are just like random things. I've been, um, I did this weird poster thing recently. And, um, I'm like obsessed with 3D heads. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it'll become something, but just having fun creating stuff, I find it to be really interesting to just let my, my mind go with these kind of things. So it's like another 3D head that's chrome with red eyes that's stuck in red fluid. What the fuck? <laughs> so here's a 3D head that's exploding, kind of. It's weird. Yeah. But no, I'm serious, I'm just having fun. Um, so here's some client work, some recent stuff that I've been doing. And the reason why I want to show this is because it's kind of a culmination of, this is actually like probably six months old now, but um, for me it's like a culmination of what I'm learning in 3D and combining with like photo mashing and, and compositions and textures and using geo and all kinds of stuff and like creating spacey environments and just randomness that is fun. So. There's nothing really to say about this. It's just fun for me to create it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, this is like a mix between Photoshop, uh, Cinema 4D, and images off the internet. Yeah, turn those lights up. <laughs> there we go. Ah, oh, it's so bright. Okay. Can you guys see that okay? There we go. How's that? Heck yeah. The disco ball out next? <laughs> All right. I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. Here's another one. So it's like, like I said, it's just kind of an evolution of me playing with uh, visual languages. This one in particular is kind of fun because I drew the sketch, and I'll show you guys my process, but I drew a sketch, I draw really small sketches, like maybe like an inch big composition, just to get the idea out. Um, and then I went to Cinema 4D and I set up a camera, and I'd never done this before, and I was like, let me move this ball around here and set up this thing, this grid and all that stuff. And, it was actually really rewarding because I didn't have to sit in Photoshop for like six hours. It was a lot faster. So, hooray, Cinema 4D. So, all right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the FIT title sequence because that's more recent as well. And it's something that it was a really fun project to be involved in. It was a lot of fun. And just here's some of the style frames that I designed. And uh, for me, it was just like a really great experience. It was nine of us, and it was just a passion project. Everybody was just really great to collaborate with, um, amazing team, and it just reignited this kind of creative energy within me that re reminded me that I love collaborating with people, and you know, when you make something with somebody else and they complement your weaknesses with their strengths, it's like the best exchange, and so here's some of the style frames. It's kind of a culmination of just a bunch of randomness. Somebody's phone's up here and their alarm's going off. Oh, wait, Colin, I don't know. Anyways. Um, Here's another one, and it's like kind of just playing with colors, and for me, um, as I explain my creative process, it's more or less just trying to find something interesting about the piece that speaks to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that more when I get into my process, but these are some more of the style frames that helped guide and direct the project as we're developing it. Here's another one, and I'm just going to shut up now and show you guys the thing if you guys haven't seen it already. Can you cut the lights? Set the mood.
Thank you. Thank you. It was, for me, it was just such a great experience to help direct that and work and find, and discover new talent within the team and kind of discover part of myself that I felt like kind of died recently before this project because I've been working on people's films and all that stuff and it kind of had to disconnect from design and stuff. So that was like a project for me that reminded me that working with a team is something that makes me really happy and, and having the right team members and you know relying on them and counting on them and letting the work become itself. Um, that was that experience for me. It was like a really personal journey, but it was a lot of fun to discover that. And it was really cool being able to release that and stuff. Here's a little bit of a process too. So show that and you can turn down the lights if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Shout out to Andrew and Nick too. Some of my, some of my teammates, I think they're in the room right now. So, badasses. <laughs> so let's jump into stuff, the journey, um, and talk about some of the lessons that I've learned, some techniques that I've used to kind of implement good practices every day, some downfalls that have occurred, and trying to overcome certain things like creative, creative barriers and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm just going to jump into um, the, these two chapters. So one of them is lessons learned, and the next is going to be my process. So there's two different sections that are coming up. So with lessons learned, I'm going to talk a bit about um, how I deal with creative block. I don't get creative block anymore. And when I first started, I'd get it all the time. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've overcome it and kind of the practices that I've done, because I feel like a lot of people um, that I talk to encounter it, and so this is, these are some of the things I'm going to talk about with that. Self-doubt is another one. Um, I'm going to break down my daily habits and then talk a little bit about the industry. Um, so creative block. Um, it's a really great quote by Jocelyn that kind of talks about, um, kind of breaks into this concept that I think about when I talk about creative block, and it's don't wait for inspiration, create a framework for it. and for me, that's kind of how I approach things that get in the way. It's like create a framework to succeed over these barriers. So I say fuck create a block, and I'm going to give you guys some kind of some feedback from my own self of how I've accomplished these things. So one of them is I call it like a brain hack, and it's kind of like a trendy thing people are saying nowadays. But what I try to do is I try to sit and, and really um, focus. If I'm having a hard time, I'll sit down and write down, OK, like right now I'm, I didn't get much sleep. and there's another thing that's occurring to me right now or I've, I feel like I'm repeating myself and I really articulate what I'm doing at that moment and then try to distill it down to an essence and then try to find when I can break out of that habit. Um, so by 
the little techniques that I do right now is like I'll take little walks, or um, I do jujitsu as well. So for me, like going to train jujitsu is like completely opposite than sitting at the desk clicking the mouse. It's like couldn't be a, no, a more different, odd, odd, odder world. So that's another thing that it helps for me is to do something completely opposite from creative for creativity. It's creative it's in, in its own right, but it's completely different. So trying something completely different has been what I've been doing. Um, Cross pollination. So taking completely two different ideas. I did this project for this homage to Ghost in the Shell, for example, and I'm a big fan of Gregory Crutzen. Are you guys familiar with Gregory Crutzen's work? This is a phenomenal uh, photographer. If you're not, check him out. There's a movie on Netflix, a uh, Gregory Crutzen film. I saw that, and then I was like watching uh, Ghost in the Shell, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let me do like what Gregory Crutzen does, and then combine it with Ghost in the Shell Japanese anime and create this project, and that was by taking these two completely opposite things, I had no creative block because I was busy for 14 months freaking figuring it out. So it was a pain in the butt, but that was part of the journey. So allowing yourself to find hybrids and building hybrids off of cross-pollination, like you can find and, and invent a new idea. Um, I also try to set good habits by avoiding pitfalls. Um, it's important to find your, find your habits. So if you're, if you're finding your, oh, I'm having a creative break, but um, I, I'm, I keep getting stuck here, then you discover like, oh, I'm visiting these same websites all the time or whatever, or I'm not going out for walks, or I'm not doing certain things that will engage my mind, or reading books and stuff like that. So um, it's really important for me personally to write down my daily habits and really focus on what those things are and kind of have a, have a document, not only in my head, but on paper, so I have a bad memory. One thing that I do that really helps me is if I'm having a hard time with something or trying to get started on something, I'll just say this three words. And honestly, it sounds weird, but it works for me personally. But just for now, like just for now, I'm going to start working on this. And if you take it one step at a time, like I, I used to hear this kind of advice and be like, come on, give me a break. But when I started using it, I've been able to accomplish like really big things because like I take it one step at a time. And that's helped me take over like something really big. So that's one thing that I've been trying to do as far as techniques for accomplishing something big or overcoming a creative block. Self-doubt, um, talk a little bit about my encounters with depression and how I interact with fear. And sorry, I'm going to cuss again. Fuck self-doubt. Because seriously, you don't need it. It's like, it's like a waste of energy. So um, talk a little bit about my own personal uh, touch with depression. I worked at a place called uh, Prologue, and it was a really great experience for me. But I had uh, spent a year there, and I'd commuted to uh, LA from San Diego. It was like four to six hours a day of commuting. And I basically gave my life to that place and everything that I was doing. And the time that I had disconnected myself from that studio and the work that I was doing, it was like I, I was, I don't know, I've never done hardcore drugs, but I felt like I completely disconnected from this high amount of information and the stimulus. And I felt really disconnected from my own personal self. So I was in a really, in really rare form for a couple weeks and I completely lost like myself. And so the, the way that I kind of came back from that was just taking a moment and really looking around me and, and, and realizing like I have a great family and great friends and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, really trying to focus on the positive aspects of my life. And when I talk about fear, um, my, my aspect of dealing with fear is like, Fear is inevitable. Um, I, I, nowadays, I try to embrace it because it, sh it gives me the, the viewpoint of respect. I respect projects when they, have, when they make me fearful. Like right now, I'm, 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 in break, I'm embarking on like a really big next step in my life and my creative journey, and it's making me scared as shit, and that makes me know that I'm on the right step because it's like I respect it. And you should always be kind of allowing a little bit of fear in, embrace it, and don't let it overwhelm you. So that's kind of the way that I've been dealing with fear itself. Um, one practice that I tell myself a lot, and I've been using it for the past um, year or so, is especially when I was for starting to go onto this this journey, was like visualize the person that I'm trying to be. And by this practice, like literally, if you do this, it's interesting practice. But I sit there and I think of my dream day. Like, what does my dream day consist of? I write it out hour by hour, like I'm writing a f like a script, basically. I write it down. I see it, I visualize it, I read it back to myself, I can fix it, scratch out things I don't like, then I really consider the possibility of it becoming a reality, harness it, and then become it. I mean, that's it. The only th person that's in the way of your own success is yourself. That's what I think of, so. Um, I'm gonna talk about my daily habits, but this, this is another quote from Jocelyn. She has a bunch of great ones. It's in this book called Manage Your Day-to-Day. -day. Little plug, I always plug this book on the podcast, so. 
Uh, any kind of excellence ultimately requires observation, refinement, adaptation, and endurance. Is this too much words, you guys? Are you guys getting tired? Sorry, I'm going to show images later. Okay, I promise. But I wanted to, you know, like while I'm here, I want to give you guys the best thing that I can, which is some of this advice. So, um, talk a little bit about my daily habits. Um, so my daily habits, I have. There's many, there's many things that I put in my day. I, I, I compact the shit out of my day. Like every minute of my day, when I'm working, is like heavily impacted. So I wanted to try and break these things down into like six different sections. So the first section is the taskmaster, is what I call it. Um, the second one is my concept of time, and then the other one's goals, um, the end date, playtime, and rest and recovery. So when I talk about taskmaster, this is going to get kind of crazy because you guys might want to take some notes if you guys don't already have notes. But um, so this is how I do it. So the night before, and this is like practices that I've discovered from friends and people that are really successful, the like books that I've read or just people that I've encountered that I've really are profound and prolific and doing amazing things or taking care of like big projects. This is kind of their approach. So the night before I do something big or the night before I approach the day, um, I will sit in bed or on my desk or on the sofa or whatever and I'll write down all the things that I need to do for that day. And I write it on paper because it becomes a reality. It's not a digital thing. Um, not to say digital is wrong, it's just I've, I'm come from, I'm a 1980s kid so like paper is my shit. So. I write down paper, um, so I write down my damn paper, and then there's a whole another list. So you write everything out, and then I write, and then the next step is priorities, because it's one thing to have everything, but the next step you have to do is set priorities to it. So I write a priority list, and this, is, this, this stuff also comes from a book called Eat That Frog, which I recommend a lot too, um, about time priority, like uh, giving uh, priority to the, act, to the things that you're trying to accomplish. So I set a priority list from A to D, A, B, C, D, and so the, an A-list priority is something that if you don't do it, like your life's fucked or you're in big trouble. So for example, like an A-list priority is to take my daughter to school in the morning. If I don't take her to school in the morning, my wife's gonna kill me, she, school's gonna kill me, my daughter's gonna yell at me. So that's a, like an A-list, right? Um, and another A-list is like client work because if I don't take care of my client, then I can't pay the bills and yada yada. So, uh, B list is something right below that, so that might be my own personal project that's really important. Somebody's relying on something for me to get them an asset or like the FITC thing or something like that. Um, C is like right below a B, and then like a D is something that you don't really need to do or you can delegate it or have somebody else do it or send an email or email somebody back. So I set priorities. So I have my list of the day. I have a little box aside from everything, and I itemize it by the time and priorities. Um, then, okay, it's, am I losing you guys here? It's pretty simple, right? Um, then I take all this crap from my sketchbook and then I put it into the calendar so my wife knows what I'm doing, anybody that I'm collaborating with is aware of where I'm at, what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. And then, <laughs> seriously, this is this whole structure. 20% it should equate to 80% of my effort. So what I do then is I put, uh, so I set a timer alarm on my phone and I just sit there and I tell Siri like, set alarm for 8.30, set alarm for nine o'clock. The alarm for 11.30. And basically every moment that I have to break a chapter, so if I, at 11 o'clock I have a call, I set an alarm on my phone. So if I'm working, because we're, we're creative people, so when I get in the mode of creating, like time flies, right? You know, when you're creating, nothing, time doesn't even exist. And so I have to bring myself back to reality and I really end up hating my phone because it's always pulling me out of these like fun experiences. But it's part of discipline and if you want to be professional, it's part of the practice, at least for me. So I set alarms, it gets me back on my tasks that I need to do, and then I just smash through it. And I don't know, like it's crazy, by organizing it, having this process, I'm able to le like at least easily double how, how efficient I am the past six months. That way I'm able to do not just six projects, but 12 projects. No, I'm just joking, not 12 projects, but close to it though, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, so for here, it's like I have to set a really, visualize, you know, it's visualizing, but also giving myself like a tangible step-by-step -step process. Like it's not vague, it's not abstract, it becomes this thing that I can actually use. Um, and then I sleep on it. So the night I go to sleep and I'm already thinking, I mean, everybody in this room, close your eyes and imagine a black wall. Okay, then there's a white circle in the middle of that. Can you all see that? Everything you do, you should be able to visualize these things. Like each one of your processes should be something that you can visualize 
and see each step to that process. So that's kind of the same thing that I approach. Like if I have to make this crazy file for this client or whatever, I'm already thinking like, okay, this is gonna be my approach. I have to draw out this thing and then I have to go into Illustrator, then I have to break this thing down in cinema and then go into Photoshop and I've already made it in my head. So when I go to sleep, it's already like done. So when I go to the computer, it's fucking go time. So it works, it works for me. Um, time, I always say this, it's a, uh, it just makes sense to me is the, uh, the, the richest po person and the poorest person, spiritually and monetarily, uh, share the same currency, and that's time. So everybody in this room should value your time. Like, it's really important. If you don't, then it's like, what the heck are you doing? I don't know. But that's my opinion. But um, you should uh, really look at your time as being very precious. I personally try to avoid interruptions in my day. It's impossible, though. You know, like, this thing's always blowing up. Somebody needs something. Um, some random anomaly happens. Uh, the website breaks or something. I don't know. Some bullshit happens. Or my daughter gets in trouble at school. I go pick her up and miss all everything else, you know? So something like that. Um, one habit I do is I give Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I have all those accounts, but I only give them 10 to 15 minutes of my day, maximum. Those freaking things are time sucks. I mean, they will eat all your time if you're not careful. So that's what I personally do. Um, I turn off my phone or I put it on silent mode. Um, I turn off the browser if I'm not using it. And I just focus. Um, the difference, like I studied like a bunch of people, Stephen King, for example. I mean, that guy freaking crushes books. And his whole practice, I read his book on writing. It's a really amazing book about writing, but it's, he just, he's a freaking taskmaster. And he just gets to work. He gets up in the morning, has a routine, blasts through it. He's a professional. And I wanted to treat myself the same. And I wanted that to reflect in my work. And this is like the process that I do to make the work that I do. So, Goals. Um, goals are really important, obviously. You don't have them. For me, it's like I need a vision. So goals for me are kind of like that's where I'm going. Um, I set a one week, a one month, three month, six month, and a one year goal. One year goal is really abstract. It's just kind of like, you know, dear Santa Claus, I want to be awesome. Yeah. It's like stuff like that. One week is very close. It's like the step that you take. Um, and then the one week's broken down by the day task. So every week on Sunday night, I'll write out the, everything that I need to do f for the projected week, whether it's client work or I'm working on a video game right now, like I'm building my own video game and making books and like all kinds of stuff. I run the podcast with Andrew. It's like so much stuff going on. So I constantly, okay, this time I have a podcast, all this stuff. So I break it down into little sections and I set milestones and visualize it. And like treat yourself. Like if you like something really cool, like if you accomplish a goal, like Seriously, go out to eat a nice dinner or something. Like, reward yourself. It's important to keep yourself on, on point with that, at least for me. Um, and then I also keep, like, a daily chart, like I said. If I can see, at the end of the day, if I have 10 things on that list that I need to take care of, two of them are A list, four of them are B, the you know, others are C or D. If I can accomplish 80% of that, which is eight of those boxes, then I feel like I've accomplished 80% of my freaking day. Like, I've lived, it's a worthy day of my life, basically. Um, the end date, and I'll use the John Lasseter quote because I think it's pretty awesome. Um, our films don't get finished, they just get released. Nothing's ever finished right, I mean, it's just you kind of have to just say that's done, you set the end date. So for me, it's really important. Um, don't be known as just a starter, like you have to finish stuff, for me at least. Um, that's really challenging. Um, for me personally, it's challenging to finish things because it can always be better, right? The next day, I'm a little bit more enlightened. I can do this. Oh, there's this plug-in, like, oh, Arnold Render is coming out. You can do these freaking awesome caustic rendering effects or something. No, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do the next day, but if you set an end date and you stick to it, it gets finished, you can move on. Like, for me, it's really important. Talk a little bit about playtime. For me, personally, it's really important to give myself a little bit of my day to my own projects, my own things that I'm into. Um, I try to give myself at least, like, one to two hours. Um, depending on where you put that in your day, like some people work really good at just taking care of their hardest tasks in the morning. I sometimes don't do that, so I usually take care of it later at night. Um, but for me, it's really helped me personally, spiritually. I can't always work on client work because I feel like, although I'm really blessed and thankful, I feel like it's always compromised. It's not my purest intention because they're always like, oh, you know, like, can you push that pixel to the right two pixels? No, push it back. Turn it green. No, turn it red. It's like, ah. Uh, so you guys all know what I'm experiencing. So, um, so let's talk about like, my personal stuff. It's like I'm creating this whole world called Lost Boy. And it's like I'm going back to being a kid again, drawing. And it's a lot of fun. And I don't know. If I didn't allow myself to have that personal outlet, 
I don't think it would affect my, person, like my, my client work as well, and it just kind of helps me personally. Um, I know a lot of creatives are the same way. It's important, you know? Before we were working in this industry, at least for me, it's like I was drawing as a kid, like just having fun. So I'm trying to get back to that purity, you know? Here's some more. There's a lot of cool stuff going on that I can't wait to share with you guys. So. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Um, restaurant recovery. I'm really bad at this, so I probably shouldn't preach it. My wife's always giving me crap for it, but like you should at least get some sleep because it's important. I don't always do it, honestly. Like I'm getting like three to four, sometimes five hours of sleep, but I'm a total diva when I don't sleep well. You know, I'm a total asshole. Um, so it's important to get sleep because the way I make decisions, my mood, my choices, my emotions, my clarity of thought, they really, uh, it's hard, you know? It's hard to make proper decisions when you're on four hours, three hours of sleep. So for me, when I get eight hours, I'm a completely different person. And I noticed that, and so I'm trying to work on getting better at it. It's just, I think I overpacked my day. So like I said, these are my own practices. I'm, work, I'm working on him. But rest and recovery is really important. Same with like if you work out or something like that. If you keep, if you keep like doing curls, like, oh man, I'm getting so buff, but then you, you just keep tearing the muscle, it will never grow. So it's important for that. So the industry, um, a couple things that I've learned by working in the industry and being, um, I don't know, like being able to keep on top of my game. I live in San Diego. I'm pretty much, I might as well live in like Milwaukee looking at you. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm, I'm pretty far away from like the quote unquote hub of movies and I work on films all the time. So how the heck am I doing it? And so a lot of this stuff is I stay humble and I stay really hungry. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my self-representation uh, and being professional and stuff. So. Um, for me, it's like, it's really important to stay curious and really try to keep myself optimistic about the films that I'm working on. It's not always easy, you know, like, it can be challenging, but if I stay humble and I just take in the jobs that I can and really focus on making them the best that I can, um, the, the outcome's better at the end, that I've noticed. Um, talk a little bit about, like, representing yourself. Um, to, I'm just gonna really briefly talk about like NDAs. Um, if you guys, have, how many people here have signed like NDAs and stuff for companies? Okay, it's a lot of people. So like it's get really tricky and it's kind of a bitch to read them, right? Yeah, I find it it's really shitty to read them. So I have people help me. But I'm just gonna really touch on this really simply. It was like don't sign anything you don't feel comfortable signing. So make sure that you know, you're going through this and finding out they're, they're not gonna take your kids and all that kind of stuff. So because like they will, so um, move on to the professional. Um, I'm sorry, I'm moving kind of fast, quick through, through this, there's a lot of stuff. Um, so for me, the professional is, uh, there's three things that I've noticed about other professionals, myself, how I've been able to keep things like at a level that continues to bring clients back is, there's these three things. If you can do all three of them, you're a freaking rock star. If you can do two and be okay at one, then you're pretty good. So these are the three things that I've noticed that have helped me with longevity in my, in my career. Um, so um, you gotta keep your work at a certain level. If your client's coming to you, it's like, okay, I want you to do this thing, and you gotta be at this level that I saw on your website. Make sure it's at that level or higher. Um, be really good at communication. So, you know, clarity in your emails, um, just being really clear on, on phones. Try not to put too much emotional stuff in there if you can. And then the other one is super important for me that I've noticed is like, you must be on time. I think you can be kind of, shitty with communication and like high in quality and, and great at time. So like there's little bits of it, but I've noticed those are the three like really big important things for freelancing and keeping yourself like relevant on the, on the point. These are the three things that I've noticed. So let's jump into my process. You guys ready? You guys are so loud. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so there's uh, six different things, chapters, okay? Um, the incept, clarity vision, enter the void of technology, the gold standard, production, and then quote unquote finished. Here we go. So in the incept phase, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through something that's like really relevant because I just actually just finished working on it. So it's like, you guys are seeing exactly what I've been working on. Um, so the incept moment is, I'm currently obsessed with like math and sacred geometry and all this like, weird like religion stuff and like what the hell and all these questions that don't have answers and so I just my mind runs with it right so I'm on these walks and I'll just write, write down weird words and I'll come back to my house and I'll write down like in my sketchbook all this weird stuff it's like just 
flying out of my head. And so the inception point in my creative path is just get the ideas out as fast as possible. And since I am an artist firsthand, I suppose, is I'm, I can connect my brain to my hand, which connects to paper, which connects to you guys. So I've created a stream of communication. So what I'm trying to do is get the, all the ideas out as fast as possible. So, and these sketches suck, but they're, they get the ideas out. For me, it's like a bookmark, right? It's like I remember that thought. Like, oh, that thing up in the upper right? Like, what the hell is that? But, oh, yeah, that's right. I can make this symbol. And I want to, oh, I have this idea of making a symbol language. So for me, the inset moment is just being free, getting the ideas out, and just exploring. Here's some more. Just scribbles and getting ideas out. So from there, I try to find the thing that I'm focusing on most. So I'll work on clarity and vision, really defining exactly what I'm going for, just really focusing on those things that kind of stuck out to me. So key words or key things that really inspired me. And so um, once I have that, I'll kind of sit there. And this is kind of weird. I don't know if this will make sense. But what I've been doing lately is maybe I'm just late to the game. But I've been trying to do a lot of like really heavy meditation. Does this sound weird? But I've been trying to think and work in my head. So I'm building everything in my head, basically. And then I go and do it in the computer. So before when I first started, I'd be like, oh, yeah, go, go internet, and then computer, you know, just like I expect the computer to give me the answers that I was after, but I'm going completely opposite now. I'm going back to my own imagination, creating the idea in my head, and then going to the computer. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about entering that void of technology. Um, for me personally, when I enter it and why I enter it and why I take a break, why I don't go into it instantly is because I want to create a moment that I can take a moment to kind of sit and think, create the idea, rather than jumping in and trying to find the results. So my process with this is when I enter the computer is I start using a program called Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> Little plug. No, joking. Um, so what I do is I'll take all those like crappy sketches, and I'll see them in my head, and I'll build it in my head. And, uh, and I'm not doing drugs, too. Promise. Um, <laughs> um, and then I, so I'll go into Illustrator, I'll set a grid, build the, build the file out. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, I want to make some prints. So I want to make a series of four prints based off sacred geometry and based on all these weird ideas that I have. And so here's kind of the process of how I create it. So I go into Illustrator, I start building the assets and go into like all these little weird details. And I don't know, honestly, I just put on some crazy music and I just go. Because at this moment, I'm just vibing away with it. One line tells me to draw the next one and then before I know it, it's like four in the morning. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> but that's seriously how it works. And so here's kind of um, all four of the, f of the prints and how they look in the line, like in the line, uh, line work, I guess. Um, and this is all Illustrator. And it's like really basic. I probably know like 2% of how Illustrator works. I know more, but I don't even use that much, honestly. I just want to get the ideas out. I'm very much the type of person, I don't want to know all the in, ins and outs of the program. I just want to freaking do it and get it out of my head and get on to the next thing. So um, here's a little bit more line detail. Oh, this is when I'm going to Photoshop. So I'll bring everything into Photoshop. And it's time to get crazy. And then I'll start adding colors and like tripping out on stuff. And I'm still not doing drugs, I promise. But I'm just having fun. I'm tr trying to see how using color and interacting with color and, and how that's working, composition and playing with different aspects and building masks and all kinds of madness. And it's basically, at this point, I'm just kind of exploring. I'm trying to find what I consider to be like the gold standard, what, what basically the trendsetter for this whole project. I'm trying to discover it. At this point, it's, my intention was, it was in my head, and then the computer is telling me now, at this point, um, I'm having a communication with my computer. Do I sound crazy? I probably sound crazy. But it's, I'm talking back with the visually, visuals, mentally, what I'm seeing. And I'm trying to find something that is making me happy. It's giving me some kind of feedback, like, oh, I'm on the right path, basically. And so what I'm trying to create is the gold standard, which I consider. It's basically the piece that sets the trend for all of the other pieces. So here's that piece. When I discovered it, I was like, oh, cool. Like, that was not what was in my head. But it was cooler then because it's now I can see it in all this detail and stuff. So see how I do like little breadcrumbs? Like I Hansel and, Hansel and Gretel my way to the project. Here's a little detail. So quiet. 
Okay. Um, and then the next stage is production. So now I have the gold standard, and I go, okay, I have three more prints. I have to take them all to that same level. How the hell did I do that? Follow the same route, but have to have anomalies there so that it doesn't feel like it's the exact same piece. So here is the next one. It's similar, same kind of things, but completely different, for me at least. It's a ton of fun for me. It's like, I literally just finished this. So you guys are seeing like literally just, this is like what I'm happy with, and then next week I'm probably gonna hate it. So let's all enjoy this moment together. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm very judgmental of myself. And so here's some more. And um, yeah, honestly, I think it's a lot of just, when I look at these images, I think of like, all the YouTube videos of hippies talking about drugs and then ge sacred geometry and like the whole religion madness. And it's almost like I've taken all that stuff, then I went away and I thought about it myself and then I isolated myself and created this. It's almost like I took everything and then I built all this madness and here it is. And then the last stage is Finished, like I said earlier, like even John Lasser said, it's like nothing's finished, and so it isn't obviously, but I can at least like hope for it, you know. So right now it's finished, and there I'm making a store in my website, and this is the first time that I'm gonna test that out too. I'm actually selling these, so I'm just like advertising it shamelessly. <laughs> Sorry, I totally walked you guys into that, but no, seriously. Um, that's kind of my creative process. And honestly, like everything from Ender's Game or Total Recall, the film stuff, it's all very similar. The process for me is just, um, it changes, obviously, based off the thing. It's like UI for film is, is different from this. Um, this is more personal and um, completely different as, a, as an adventure, a journey, um, but it's really similar. Um, but that's it, boom. <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much. Five minutes. What do you want to do? Q and A. You guys have questions. I have five minutes. Five minutes. Five minute foot long. Question. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, so talking about Lost Boys, so Lost Boys is really crazy. Um, there is, I don't know how much I can talk about it, but um, working on movie and toys and all kinds of stuff, I have to go back and draw the book. So for me right now, it's, it's like huge, but I'm trying, what I, I was releasing a lot of stuff and I think um, I'm, I'm hiding away from it now. So I'm trying to keep it so that when I release it, it's like, what the fuck? So I want that. So I'm kind of, it's kind of a bummer because I've been hiding from it, but, um, but thank you. And yeah, my project is, it's definitely moving. I'm taking a little bit of a break. I'm building a video game right now, so it's going to get finished. Like I said, I finish things, but it's, it'll take a little bit of time. But yeah. If anything, you'll have a book, so. Question. That's a good question. So talking about the process of things and, and why I think it's important. Honestly, um, I have this podcast called The Collective and I've had so many guests on there. We have 100 episodes now and every time I have a conversation with somebody, um, I get a little something from them and some of them give me a little bit more than others. There's an episode with this guy named Vitaly and he's a freaking monster. He's amazing and he turned me on to all these methodologies and kind of systems of setting a good like platform for success and all that stuff process. So I started to really engineer myself basically to be successful because what was happening, I was like, man, I want to do so much stuff, you know, like I want to make a video game and I want to make a book of like Lost Boy and a movie of it and all that stuff and how do I do that? And I only have so much time. I'm 32 years old now. I'm like getting my back starting to hurt and like my mouse finger is like falling off, you know, it's like, so I have to really focus and what I did is just I realized that it's really important. It's actually more important than the work. The process is actually, I have to really focus on it, so. It just, it's sink or swim, basically. Questions? Don't be shy.
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Monument Valley, I was like, what the hell? Because, um, you know, video games for me is like, yeah, okay. Like, I wasn't really into them. Um, I used to be really into Super Nintendo, and like, that's what I grew up with. And so when I played Monument Valley, I was like, wow, like, these are so great. I'm so inspired right now. And then I was so, th I was so blessed to have a, a conduit to have the ability to talk with Ken, you know, and have an intimate talk with him. And also Ali Moss, too, and like my friend Ali, and talking about his video game. And so it's realizing that potential, you know, and playing that game going like, oh, I can make something. That'd be cool, you know. And so did very much so, yeah. That was like the moment. And especially after Ken was like, how long did the Ghost in the Shell thing take you? And I was like, uh, 14 months. He's like, well, we made the freaking Monument Valley in 12 months. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, I didn't, you know, what the hell? You guys made a freaking amazing video game. So I was like, I got to do it. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would show some, but I want to keep it super secret. But we might do like a Kickstarter patron. I don't know. So, question. Um, for me, thank thankfully for my position, I'm more of like a creative director now. I'm moving into like more of a director route. So um, I'm not sending like massive files. I'm not in the production c category as much anymore. Um, but I just use Dropbox, honestly, and we do like a shared file or I'll share links through Dropbox. So it's kind of ghetto, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Ender's Game is freaking nuts, right? So like Ender's Game was like, Honestly, I made 700 Photoshop files or some bullshit like that of that project. And so it was, it was like, that was the first UI job I've ever done. So with Ender's Game, um, I had a team and we were sending stuff. So it's like we used the FI FTP for that. So, but yeah. Awesome. I hope that helps. Okay, guys, I think that's it. You guys freaking rock. Thank you so much.